Hello everyone and welcome back to my KSP tutorial series in Kerbal Space Program Beta 0.90 and in this episode I want to discuss what Delta V is but before getting to that we have to take a look at our contracts and deal with the business of running a space center. So we've got the we've already got one contract to perform vis visual surveys of Kerbin so that's going to be important but I was hoping for something a little bit more interesting. We've got Explore the Moon here that looks good. We've got testing the booster in flight. Wow, they really wanted us to test those boosters in flight. Testing the stack decoupler landed at Kerbin. Gotta pick that one up quickly because that seems pretty straightforward. We have to be very careful with our funds and uh, contracts we get because we we are pretty tight on our budget here, and we're gonna come in. T uh, a lot of people have been commenting that we're going to get into a lot of trouble when it comes time to really uh, take care of the more complicated contracts. Okay, so I'm going to test that decoupler. It says a stack decoupler. All right. So I'm gonna have to have a command pod, and what we're doing is we're testing this stack decoupler landed on Kerbin. Oh, that let's let's put it on top. Probably safer. Would it be safer? Um, let's have it go the other way. That was D that I just used for that, by the way. Uh, so, okay. Um, this could go very interesting. Landed. Yep. Yeah, okay. Let's try it out. Really, we should have had somebody other than Jeb this time, but uh, anyway, here we go. Um, all we have to do is fire it off, right? Yep. Off it goes. I don't know where it went. Okay, well, we're not going to recover that piece, but we are going to recover Jeb and this capsule. Oh. Okay, well, that, uh, well, that's, that's, that's what you get for trying to fire a gun in the air. Uh, <laughs> We, uh, well, we recovered uh, Jeb and the capsule and the mono propellant inside, and so, okay, uh, we didn't quite, I don't think we got much from that, did we? We didn't get too much from it. How much did we get? Only 76 funds and one science. Maybe it wasn't even worth it. Okay, so, now I want to retry that mission from, from the previous time. From episode 2. So to try and complete the visual survey mission I'm just going to use this visual survey unit 1 again. I'm gonna dump the goo containers because we're going to the same location I don't think we're going to be getting new scientific data from that and so we're going to just uh, keep it to a minimum. We're not gonna get too much funds or science from this but I do want to complete the mission. We'll get a little bit out of it. But before we go ahead I want to talk about a concept, a key concept in uh, this program and in in uh, rocket science altogether and that is delta v now we talked about velocity being a vector okay which means it's a pointer in space the length of this pointer is your speed it's the magnitude of the vector and the direction of the vector tells you the direction you're going in so the velocity vector has that direction component and the speed component combined so it's a little arrow in space and we're going to always try to orient ourselves with regard to this vector, the, the direction that we are currently going in. All right. Now, right now I'm going to display a little diagram. I can't actually see the diagram because of the way I'm editing this, but I made it already so I know what it shows. And what you'll notice is delta V and then uh, the equation V1 plus delta V, that little triangle symbol is the delta equals v2 which means your first velocity which is a vector plus this thing called delta v equals a new velocity vector called ve uh, velocity 2 the delta v then is a change in velocity which means not only a change in speed so if you are already going 60 miles an hour and you now uh, you eventually go 80 miles an hour you have changed your speed by 20 miles an hour that is a delta v of 20 miles an hour but we did not specify the direction. Okay, you have to specify the direction for it to be a real delta v. And you can see the three main situations I've got outlined below that. One is a prograde burn, 
which is uh, the case where you increase your velocity in the direction you're currently going in. In other words, you're going to burn along your prograde vector. We talked about the prograde vector in a previous episode. So if you burn along a prograde vector, let's say you're already going 600 meters per second, and then you do a 200 meter per second burn, now you're going 800 meters meters per second. Remember, in space, nothing is slowing you down. So in free space, uh, assuming no gravitational influences, uh, which are uh, sort of accelerating you in one direction or another, or anything like that, there's no friction, there's no drag, and so in free space, if you burn 200 meters per second in a direction, you're going to get that full benefit if you're burning along the prograde vector. So you see that increase. So the, the original velocity vector was in black, the delta v in red, and then the new vector in blue. A retrograde burn is if you're burning in the opposite direction of your current prograde vector. In other words, you're burning retrograde, which is the little marker with the x in it on your nav ball. And in that case, if you're already going 600 meters per second and you burn 200 meters per second in the opposite direction, you are now going 400 meters per second in the original direction. Okay, And of course, if you burn more than 600 meters per second in the opposite direction, you are going to start going in the opposite direction that you are currently going in. Your prograde vector will turn around 180 degrees and you'll be going, well, I won't say backwards. It's important to note that all of this is in relation to something, and we'll talk more about that in a sec. The other main possibility, these are sort of the primary cases. Now you could do any angle in between these. You could burn 45 degree angle or something like that. But the other main case is a 90 degree angle away from your prograde vector. And this is either a radial burn or a normal burn. And we'll talk about the difference. A radial burn is, if you like to think, left and right and then uh, normal burn up or down, but it's not quite like that. Uh, but the point is that both of these will be 90 degrees away from your prograde vector, and you can see the result. Uh, the bigger the delta V is in the radial or normal direction, the more deflected you get away from your original vector. So you're basically changing your heading in that case, right? You're basically changing the direction of your vector. Whereas in the other two cases, you are either you, you are either lengthening or shortening the, vec the the original vector. Okay, so those are the three main cases. I hope that's clear. I'm I'm sure the diagram is clearer than me talking about it. Oh, the other thing uh, you'll notice a little uh, calculation on the side of the radial normal burn, um, because you can see it's a triangle. It's a triangle, and it is a triangle with a right angle. So you calculate it with using a squared plus b squared equals c squared about one leg of the triangle plus uh, squared plus the other leg of the triangle squared equals the hypotenuse squared. This is the Pythagorean theorem. And so we take the 600 meters per second squared plus the 200 meters per second squared. We get an answer and then we square root that. And what we end up getting is 632 meters per second. Note that this means that a radio burn or a normal burn will increase your speed, uh, increase your speed in a new direction, but it won't increase it as much as if you did a prograde burn, right? The prograde burn is uh, much more beneficial at increasing your speed. Any amount that you deflect away from prograde, it will start changing your heading, but uh, you will not have the speed increase as much. So that's why I say that uh, deflecting away from prograde means that you're not as efficient because you're not gaining as much speed as you would if you were po pointing a prograde vector and especially if you're trying to make orbit the goal is to get going as quickly as possible uh, so you don't want to be deflecting too much away from that because you're going to lose some of the benefit of your thrust okay now as i was saying the the key is that these velocities all have to do with some frame of reference you have to have some point to refer to. How fast are you going relative to some point? Are you relative to a point that is already moving? For instance, are you going quickly with respect to a moving train? Or are you going uh, very quickly compared to somebody standing on the surface? So the two main cases that you'll have in Kerbal Space Program is the surface velocity and orbital velocity. The surface velocity 
is going to be a point on the ground. But the point on the ground is already rotating with the with the planet, right? Because the planet rotates, and so it's going around with the planet as the planet rotates. So it's already got a velocity, okay? And that velocity would be with respect to a fixed point in space. Orbital velocity is measured by a fixed point in space, not a point on the surface. And that's the velocity that you're going to be interested in while getting into orbit and doing your space maneuvers. And so a fixed point in space, the surface point is already going at about 180 meters per second east. So in this next diagram, you're going to see what the situation was in the second episode and what the situation is going to be right now with the visual survey. We've already got a component uh, of velocity, orbital velocity, eastward away from the KSC, uh, you know, well, along with the KSC, because the KSC is moving in that direction as well as the planet rotates. So we've already got that uh, V1. And we've, uh, so we've already got a V1 eastward to the tune of 180 meters per second or so. But what we really want to do is go to northwest, which is that blue arrow, and that's because our target is northwest at uh, 315 degrees or so and that's the direction we want to go in but if you recall in the previous uh, in episode 2 we couldn't really point at 315 we ended up going too far north and so you can see from the diagram that actually in order to aim at the target at 315 the direction we need to go in is uh, sort of uh, west northwest it's somewhere between flat west and northwest uh, approximately let's say 300 degrees okay we could calculate out exactly where we should be pointing but the point is we are not pointing directly at the target because we have to deal with the initial velocity that we get from the rotation of the planet and so that's the what you see from that diagram again the delta V is just uh, the difference between where the first velocity that you currently have and the difference between that and the velocity that you want. Okay, uh, this is probably different from the way some people have been thinking about delta V so far, but that's that's what delta V is. Now, later on, we're going to be talking about the total delta V that a rocket has, a rocket like this has, and we can calculate. So you you have these changes in velocity. Why do you need to know them? And the reason you need to know them is because that's how you determine how much you can maneuver in space. We can calculate how much delta V this rocket has, and I'll tell you how to do that in a, a future episode, or if we have a contract that leads me to it in this episode. But we can calculate the delta V that this rocket has, and actually we would calculate stage by stage. So this stage will have a particular delta V, and this stage will have a particular delta V, and we will add them together. Uh, based on this stage carrying this as a payload, but we'll get to all those calculations later. But basically, it tells you your rocket's range, if you will. Uh, it tells you how much you can maneuver in space and where you can get to, because in space everything has to do with how much you can change your velocity. Uh, there's there's no drag, and so there's there's no other influence that you have to worry about except for simply increasing and decreasing your velocity somehow. Okay, but we'll get way more into that in the future. Let's get on with this mission. So here we are on the launch pad. Doesn't seem too damaged from that decoupler. Looks like it's fairly well intact. We've got new features with Jeb. We've got this prograde and retrograde vector. Aha! So now you know what those I mean, really are. Okay, uh, delta V wise, you know what uh, what the significance is, hopefully, and uh, you will soon know what all the other little all these are. But uh, we'll deal with that as we get them. So we're aiming again for this little target here. This time I will try not to miss the message that I've actually reached it, and otherwise, just looking for a crew report. Now, we are not going to aim directly at it. We are not going to aim at that marker that it has there. We're going to aim somewhat further west, as that diagram suggested. Okay, throttle up, SAS is on, and launch. 
So you see here, this is surface velocity. This is with regard to a fixed point on the surface. This is orbital velocity, which should be east right now. Okay, so we can't even see the orbital velocity marker. Again, we're going up to avoid the thick part of the atmosphere. Mainly our interest is going horizontal in a parabolic arc of some sort. Okay, so you can see how I'm starting to pitch here. And after my discussion about uh, prograde vectors and prograde burns, so this is a, I mean, with regard to the surface, this is a prograde burn. With regard to orbit, this is very much not. And you could see that from the diagram, right? The diagram shows that with regard to orbital velocity, this is like completely off. Seems to be a little bit too far west. Okay. So first stage out. Let's decouple. Now we've got the orbital velocity here and yeah we are a little bit too far west. Now obviously you could do a exact calculation to see where exactly you should launch at in terms of the heading and that that might be something we discuss much later on especially if we get to talking about launching around Earth. Now, it's, uh, while in free space, delta v is just added, uh, just like in those diagrams. Around Kerbin, we've got drag, we've got gravity, and all that, so we have losses with, uh, because of those. Wow. Okay, here we go. Okay, so it's a pretty wide zone, actually. Okay, uh, well, I guess keep the data. We we fulfilled the contract. Yay! Okay. I should really dump those. But anyway, uh, keep it for record or something. Alright, so now we are sort of hovering up here. Not much to do. I don't want to hit a mountain deliberately or anything like that. Maybe we should uh, try and get back to the KSC as much as possible. Uh, we shouldn't uh, drift so far off because it'll reduce our recovery value. So, retrograde burn. There's the KSC over there. Yeah, so I was talking about the uh, losses due to drag and gravity around, uh, in the atmosphere of Kerbin in particular, before you get to orbit. And if you remember, orbital velocity was about 2,300 meters per second. However, because of all the losses incurred because of gravity and drag, as you try and launch, it'll actually take you a total delta V, a total uh, amount of burn of about 4,500 meters per second in order to get into orbit around Kerbin from the surface. So th that's a huge difference and that's what uh, the drag and, and the gravity losses do to you. So you want to get away from those as much as possible. And that's why we launch vertically, right? That's why we launch straight up first. If we were just trying to get into orbit and we didn't have to worry about the atmosphere and gravity losses, we would be able to launch straight horizontally because that's really how you get into orbit is the horizontal component of the burn. But uh, we have to worry about the losses and that's why vertical launches are necessary because we're never going to be able to go as fast as we want to if we are within the atmosphere. Okay, I think I've done enough of this. Um, are we really on rough land? Oh, yes. Okay. Well, let's... Not a good idea to try and touch down on these mountains. Uh, you might end up rolling around and get your Kerbal killed. I didn't even uh, use these functions. Well, let's let's have Jeb point retrograde now. Okay, uh, that's interesting. Having Jeb point retrograde depletes electric charge very quickly. Stability assist. 
very slowly. Retrograde very quickly, huh? Okay, anyway, parachute deployment time. Gotta take SAS off. Oh, and without SAS, of course, Jeb can't do his thing. Huh. I wonder if really the electric charge... Uh, well, I don't know. I guess the, there could be a logic to it if he's using uh, the reaction wheel. The reaction wheel inside the pod could be taking up the electric charge and maybe he's just using a lot more of it than he uses for stability control, though. That's not very smart because stability control would have been enough to keep it at retrograde anyway. Not sure. Okay, on the tail. Well, while he's there, I don't want to try and tip it over and have him uh, get out and do the report, so we'll just recover it as is. Okay, so uh, no particular science gathered from that. Uh, we got 91% of our return value for the for the parts that we recovered. And of course, Jeb returned without any experience gained. Okay, well, we need to go to the contract screen. We've got more visual surveys. Ooh, that's a difficult one. I mean, at least, well, take, it, take an EVA report on the surface. Well, oh, on the surface, oh, okay. So we land down. Crew report in flight, crew report in flight. Can we see, let, let me see if we can take a look at where these places are in the tracking station. So here's our first time in the tracking station. This, uh, if you want to switch between vessels, once you have more than one spaceship uh, around, then this will be the place to go. But uh, I want to see where these places are. We've got Mac Mac Tree's belt here, Kerman's Gorge there, Rick Bart's point there, and then that's for another contract. I can see hitting these two in one mission, but not that one at the same time. There's also a contract science day from space around Kerbin. I guess we could theoretically do that. But, and then it's worth quite a lot. Gotta think about that. So, uh, going back to uh, this one. Oh, uh, both of these are the in-flight, so we'd have to... No, that's not good. Because they want the EV report at surface at Mac Tree's belt, but that's closer. We'd fly over that first and then go over to Kerman's Gorge in the, the current direction. So, it'd be the opposite direction. Yeah, we'd have to actually go to Kerman's Gorge and then turn around and then land at Mac Tree's belt. That's not quite so easy. And here we've got Rick Bart's point, which is totally out of the way to the south. Seems like a challenge. Okay, well let's try it. Heck. Alright, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll leave exploring the moon for a sec. I think uh, we can do that. I think we can do that, but let's let's get some more stuff first. Some more fun, some more science. Let's rack up the points here. So I'm expecting three launches of this rocket. I really don't know, and if somebody does know whether there's any benefit to having Bill or Bob go instead of Jeb, maybe they get experience from these sorts of missions. I don't know. But I think I'd be uh, happier and I feel, feel safer with the pilot on board. It's just for the stability assist, if for any, nothing else. So, yep. Okay, well, we're going to go with this. I don't see a need for packing the mystery goo. And I don't think we have any other science that we can pack. Oh, we do have the science junior. Hmm. We should bring that to orbit as well. You know, we got this contract. Hold on a sec. So yeah, I'm going to take up this uh, science data from space around Kerbin contract. And we'll do the Science Junior there. That will probably be in the next episode. Okay, so we're going to launch this and continue our visual surveys as planned. Alright, here we go. Let's pick a target. This we have to land on. This we fly over. This we fly over. 
This is sort of ridiculous, actually. Now, if we're going to land, I'm going to put landing struts on this, so I'm not going to uh, launch this without the landing struts and aim for that. Uh, let's, let's fly over this one. Activate navigation. So we were a little bit too far west last time. Gotta keep that in mind. It's probably not, uh, because the actual existing orbital velocity isn't that much, we end up going like more than a thousand meters per second in the opposite direction. So, yeah, it's not that big a deflection. Okay, uh, Jeb is ready to go. Let's launch. Oh, I forgot to mention, in that little diagram that we had of what we were planning to do with these, uh, these little uh, missions where we're trying to hit particular points, uh, of course, the location in the surface is already also has its own little velocity with respect to a fixed point in space. It's also rotating, but because they're at higher latitudes, they're rotating at a different speed, uh, and of course the the pole doesn't rotate at all. So basically, uh, the further away you get from the equator, the slower they're rotating. I should have put that in the diagram too. I should have had the little uh, target point rotating as well. This is a little bit better. You can see uh, we're not aiming directly at the target, but just uh, a little bit further west. Uh, that's the end of that stage. Okay. So right now, this is our prograde vector. Uh, radial burn would be there's a radial burn. Uh, well, I mean, actually, that's the normal burn. But anyway, it, the point is it's a 90 degree angle. And that is, as you can see, it's changing my heading right now. Just turning me further towards that. Okay, here we go. Okay, keep data. Collecting survey data. Okay, now I, I'll validly try to target this thing. That's flat east, but not quite. You know what? At this point, I might as well just save the fuel. Okay, a little bit fast on the way down. Then we've got a little bit of slope here. So once we get to a low altitude, now remember the parachutes deploy at 500 meters above the surface, so that tells you how high the surface is. You just notice when the parachutes deploy. Try and make a softer landing for Jeb. Oh, topple. Is it hatch side down again? Yeah, it's hatch side down. Okay, well then we're just gonna recover him instead of having him EVA here. All right, so uh, no biggie there. Let's try and do that landing one. They want us to EVA on the surface, right? There's this one, take an EVA report on the surface at Mactree's Belt. Okay, well, wherever that is, we can do that. And all we need, I want to add landing legs now. We've got plenty of extra fuel, you'll notice. And maybe I should trim this thing down. Here we've got landing legs. Uh, have them extend as low as possible. Well, uh, the thing is you want your center mass. Okay, let's take a look at the center mass of this. See how the center mass is up there? Ideally, you'd want it actually between the legs. Would be great if you could do that. But then, of course, you still need the legs to extend below the, the engine. So you've got your constraints. And so uh, what you really don't want is the center mass to be all the way up here. And then you're just going to topple over when you touch down. I don't know if we really need to carry any goo container, but maybe we should try and carry a Science Junior for the first time. Uh, you know, it's, it's not too far away, honestly. We need all this power. Okay, I've, I've, done a, I've done a Delta V calculation. I've calculated how much Delta V this thing has. And what I've discovered is that with the Science Junior, it has about 1,700 meters per second of delta V. So, 
that's how much its velocity can change and I don't think that's enough to hit the target personally I, I haven't tried something like that before but maybe if I add a booster that that will be a cheaper way to go instead of uh, having the the whole big rocket how much is this there's only 325 and then the decoupler decoupler is expensive that's actually 400 but basically we're going to be losing 725 and maybe that'll be okay let's call this VS2 A alright well I'm gonna try this out you know I'm a little bit distressed by the fact that because they named the other two starting as uh, Kerbinauts uh, scientist and engineer and don't we don't have stability assist with them that means that basically we're using Jeb for everything that's different from previous versions where we could switch between the three of them uh, at will and not feel like we were compelled to use one or the other but okay here we go aiming for Mactree's belt and so we're headed uh, we need to head a little bit northwest but uh, well let's say north by northwest okay here we go now solid rocket boosters you cannot turn off you cannot throttle so even if I try to shut down here it doesn't do anything carefully trying to turn us north by northwest uh, north by, yeah north by northwest like I had said okay remember we're still in the drag regime we've got a lot of drag to deal with let's see our orbital velocity it's all the way over there you see we're not very close to our prograde vector right now and that's because this particular engine is struggling against the gravity of Kerbin now obviously as your fuel depletes your acceleration increases so we'll eventually talk about how to take that into account with things but for now just bear in mind that your, your acceleration will be highest when the stage is about to run out should have probably gotten higher just to get above the drag and all don't know how close to that target we need to go but I'm just going to go with this trajectory and hope for the best uh, seems a little bit off doesn't give me my message that I'm I'm reaching it should go to surface velocity here Whoop. okay well that's the end of our fuel we're coming down here one way or another at least we've got the science junior and we didn't lose much of a stage we only lost about what well the cost of the fuel plus uh, 725 but yeah I don't see any message saying that we've reached a target I don't think we would have been able to do it without the booster so that's not an option I don't think okay down Let's activate stability assist crew port valuable here no highlands but we can do the materials 4.5 signs for that keep that data EVA has no pilots on board yeah EVA report doesn't matter well let's uh, I don't know, let's plop to the surface. We'll recover Jeb and the craft separately. Oh, don't knock it over, Jeb. EV report. Ah, it's not worth anything. Okay. Well, let's recover Jeb first. Now, I haven't mentioned it, but the Kerbals do have little EVA packs, but Kerbin's gravity is too strong. We wouldn't have been able to use it to get back into the pod with Jeb. Now, tracking station. VS2A, recover. Yes. And so we got the 4.5 signs from that. 
Uh, we were 54.3 kilometers away from the KSC, so 95.5% of total value. All right. Well, I think that does it for this episode. We're going to have to look into these possibilities. And uh, I'm going again to orbit around Kerbin again to do the orbital science one with the Science Junior in the next episode. And we're going to be talking about maneuvering in orbit. And so we're going to expand upon the ideas of prograde, retrograde, normal, anti-normal, and uh, radial, anti-radial, which are the six directions, right? Because you've got three dimensions, and you can go either, if you'd like, forward and backward in each one. And so those are the three dimensions that we're going to be talking about. Uh, prograde, normal, and radial, if, if you'd like. And those are the common names for them. And we'll talk about what they mean in orbit and uh, how you maneuver in orbit in general in the next episode. So, all right, uh, we've got a lot to do. It's, it's tough business in this hard mode. And uh, so I hope it's, it's engaging for you. And, uh, yep. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.